together. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. Tonight I want to reflect on the fact that uh, the Muslim Ummah is a global phenomenon. Uh, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Hajarat, Inna ma al-mu'minuna ikhwa. Uh, the uh, believers are one brethren. So we're all one united body. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa inna hadhi ummatukum ummatan wahida. Wa anna rabbukum fat, uh, fa, fat, wa anna rabbukum fa'abudun. So, hmm? Fatakun? Okay. Uh, so, uh, Allah says, I, 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 this ummah of yours is one ummah, and I am your, uh, I am your Lord. So, the Hafaz are divided now. Is it, uh, so worship me or be aware of me? Okay, either one, it, it works. Um, so, there is something that is mentioned in the Quran, but we could not agree on what it says until we check the written script. In any case, uh, what is clear is that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord, and we are one united body. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to hold on together and do not be divided among yourselves. In Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold on to the rope of Allah, all of you together, and do not be divided among yourselves. In the same surah, a few verses later, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا وَاخْتَلَفُوا مِنْ بَعْلِ مَا جَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ Do not be like those who divided up and split up after the, uh, the, the clear message had come to them. I want to reflect on the fact that we are actually one global ummah. And besides some differences which are of a superficial nature, uh, we are united on so many important and core uh, issues. Some things are superficial, we should not be bothered about that. Like one of the issues is that right now we're praying uh, uh, Tarawi prayers. Some people may be praying Fajr. Or some people maybe are praying uh, Zohar because they're in a different time zone, it's a different climate and whatever. And uh, so they're, they're, they're following the same Islam, but according to uh, the phenomenon in their time and place. The Eid this year may, may see this kind of division where some people maybe uh, in, in North America, many will observe Eid on Friday. Uh, but in some parts of the Middle East, uh, maybe they'll, some, some will do Friday, maybe some will do Saturday. And uh, maybe in India and Pakistan, they'll do sa Saturday or Sunday. You know, some, Saturday. Saturday, they'll do Saturday. Okay, so there you go. Yeah? Here in Toronto? Well, in, in this mosque, we'll do on Friday, inshallah. Uh, but, but do not be troubled by the fact that some do it one day, some do it the other day. There are two issues uh, here. One is the, uh, the, the interpretation of the hadith dealing with this subject. Uh, you know, what does it mean? Does it mean you see the moon in one area? Is it good for everybody else in every other area? Um, uh, can you follow the mod modern calculations and to what extent and so on? So all of these are uh, new issues uh, that uh, just arise because of time and place. So that's, that's superficial. Uh, we, we all are still going to do the same thing. We're still going to offer two rakats of eight prayer. We're still going to come out in the morning saying takbir. We're still going to give our sadaqah to fitr, zakat to fitr. So we're united in so much. And, uh, and this uh, matter on which, you know, some people do it today, some people do it tomorrow, uh, that's, that's not so important because each one is trying his or her their level best uh, to uh, understand the Quran and the Sunnah and to apply it in our changing and present circumstance. What is important to see is how united we are. Look, we are offering the Salah. We prayed four akats of Isha prayer. This is unified throughout the world. All Muslims are doing this. We are observing the month of Ramadan. And as a month, even if we started a different day or ended a different day, but just to observe 29 or 30 days of fasting together and, and what Ramadan means for us, it's like universal. This is a universal religion. And Muslims all over the world are fasting during this, uh, th this month. And that's amazing. People of other religions look at us and they, they find it so interesting that Muslims are so dedicated to their religions. Because they might have thought that they were dedicated. But when they see the way that Muslims are dedicated, like with mother, which other religion do, do people en masse uh, fast for, for t uh, 29 or 30 days, for, which means a total fast from morning till evening, no food or drink. When you mention to your colleagues at work uh, that you're fasting, they say, oh, but well, you can drink something, right? You say, no, yeah, they, no, you can't drink something? Like, how do you guys manage? They find that this is amazing. 
Now, mm -hmm. in, in many religions, you have the priests and the leaders who are doing some things, but they don't expect this of the common people. But here we have Imam and the common Muslim, both. Everybody is uh, observing the, the same uh, routine and the same fast. So this is amazing. Uh, I just spoke with a brother today who said he's making plans to go for Hajj. And uh, that's a universal phenomenon. Muslims all over the world gathering to perform the Hajj. It's such a large number. That number became reduced uh, due to COVID and uh, you know, uh, other issues uh, that arose within the last few years. Um, and, and a lot used to go from here, but uh, unfortunately we are restricted in terms of the number that will be allowed even this year. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up more possibilities for us to serve Him in the best way possible. May Allah take us there in a way that is pleasing to Him and help us to perform the rites in a way uh, that will gain acceptance. But uh, it, it is a global phenomenon. And not only do we want to go there, but we also want to see what is happening there. So we're downloading the, the apps and we're following the YouTube videos of the Imams there praying and reciting the Dua and their Tarawih and recitation of the Quran and so on. So we're all connected. And um, we, we don't find this uh, connectivity uh, in, in the other religions. I just have, uh, you know, um, you can say an introductory level understanding of the other religions, so I can't speak in great detail. But from what I've seen, uh, it is only in Islam that we have this kind of global connectivity. Apart from the Hajj, there's Umrah. And uh, again and again, we're meeting brothers who are either going for Umrah or they're coming back from, from Umrah. So we are so globally connected uh, in, in Islam as one global ummah. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. And at the same time, we should note that uh, you know, what we're doing here is connected to other parts of the world as well. Here I'm speaking in Toronto, and uh, my talk is being um, live streamed, and we have people following from uh, various parts of the world. Uh, sometimes in my live stream, um, I find that there are people following from Nigeria, from Malaysia, from uh, Singapore, and sometimes China as well. Um, it, from all around the globe, people are, are following us, and sometimes even from the Middle Eastern countries like Bahrain, uh, where I have someone who regularly follows uh, what I'm doing on, on, on my Facebook. So that means we are following them, <laughs> and they are following us. We're all connected as one global ummah. So let us remember that, my brothers and sisters uh, in Islam, let us remember that we are one global ummah. And as much as we stay united, uh, they, they, they say that uh, a people united would never be defeated. So we have to remain united as one global ummah. It is more important even here, where we are living as a minority, uh, for us to remain united as one uh, body of Muslims representing the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all and sundry. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us the humble work that we're doing, the praying, the fasting, all of our salakat and uh, zakat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept uh, all of our du'as and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this global ummah and uh, may Allah uplift this ummah and rescue all of those who are suffering from oppression in so many parts of the world, in, in, in Palestine, and in Syria, Iraq, and uh, Burma, in Kashmir, in, in uh, China. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala re restore peace and harmony uh, in Sudan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stop the blood of the Muslims from, from being spilled there and uh, everywhere else. May Allah protect the people of Yemen. And everywhere, Ya Rabbul Alameen, Shurkuli Makan. Uh, so let, let us remember everyone in our du'as, especially on a night like tonight, where we're getting to the end of Ramadan. Tomorrow night will be the 29th, of, uh, 29th night of Ramadan. And it so happens that that will be the last night of Ramadan for us here in uh, Toronto, because we're uh, planning to have Eid on, on Friday. And that means that two uh, nights will coincide. One, it's an odd night of Ramadan. Uh, on which we uh, devote ourselves in worship uh, in the expectation that this could be the night of uh, Qadr. Uh, but it is also Laylatul Jaza because that is the last night of Ramadan, the, the prize giving night. That is the night on which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dishes out the rewards uh, to his faithful servants who have fasted and observed the month. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who will receive uh, a, a Jaza a reward uh, and a prize uh, for our good and faithful observance and uh, for whatever shortcomings and mistakes we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to overlook those and should forgive those and still give us uh, from his bounties and his uh, blessings. So uh, tomorrow night what else is happening? Uh, you notice what the surahs are getting shorter and shorter uh, now uh, we are narrowing down so only half of a juice will be left to be recited tomorrow night 
And that means we'll have du'a khatm al-Qur'an tomorrow night, inshallah. So tell your friends and everyone else to come out tomorrow night. And of course, as usual, the iftar will be provided here. So join us from the time of Maghrib onwards. And uh, as usual, the tahajjud prayer is going on during the night and at 3.15 in the morning. And uh, following the tahajjud, there is a suhoor offered here as well. So, uh, you know, I, I really feel good about the way things have unfolded this year, the, the, the size of the congregation, the number of people who have been coming out. And the fact that so many are coming last night, you know, I felt so good about uh, the, the masjid being filled and people worshipping here throughout the night. So may Allah Taala help us to continue with this uh, even after Ramadan is over. Of course, according to the times, we're, we're not going to do tajr throughout the year, but here in a, in a jama'ah. But, uh, you know, let's keep that spirit alive so that a Juma and other prayers, you know, we're right here and other occasions, lectures and so on. Uh, the masjid should be as filled as 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 we have it now. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you all for coming out. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.